Jorge, thanks for, for being with me. Um, tell everybody who you are and, and a little bit about your background. First of all, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for giving me the chance to spread the message of my people. And I come from Venezuela. I live my entire life in Venezuela. I moved here when I was 18 years old, like three years ago, because I wanted to study and because my political activism in Venezuela was too risky. So my family sent me here. When I came here, I saw how great this country is. So they gave me more motivation to keep fighting for freedom in my country. The, the chaos in Venezuela seems to be two sources and I can't figure out which is worse. There's the political oppression, there's a, the authoritarian, I am going to snuff out my political enemies. It comes from Nicolas Maduro and his, his eagerness to cling to power. And then there's this, this ongoing experiment in hardcore socialism that seems to be destroying the very fabric of, of the economy. Give us a sense through your eyes and through your friends and your family um, if we were in Caracas today, what, what would we see? In Caracas, first of all, and in the whole country, you will see misery everywhere. In Venezuela, you are on the streets and you see people eating from the garbage. And that's true. In a country rich in oil, in a country that was supposed to be the most developed country in Latin America, when you see that, and you see that you cannot even walk on the streets because of the insecurity. 50,000 violent murders per year. One Venezuelan is killed every 20 minutes due to insecurity and violence. So if you're in Caracas, first of all, you don't have a job. Or if you have a job, doesn't have a good salary. You cannot walk on the streets because of how insecure it is. You see people everywhere just eating garbage. You don't have medicine. You don't have food. You have inflation of 800%. And at the same time, you cannot speak out because there are not media outlets. So if you live in Venezuela, it's like you live in a prison. So that's why sometimes, sometimes you can ask a student there. It's like, it's, it's horrible to be in a jail. They're like, yeah, but if, if I'm out there, I'm still in a jail. But to be a student protester in your country, this is not, it's not safe. No, at all, because here you can fight for your liberty. You can debate, you can go to universities. But in my country, the way to do it is to go to the streets and risk your life. More than 150 students have been killed this year. More than 600 political prisoners are right now in jail simply because they wanted a better future. More than 5,000 people have been in jail just this year for political purposes. That danger is to be a political dissident, a political opposition in Venezuela. One of those protesters was Jan Goyachia, who a lot of libertarians know because he won the Cato Prize some years ago and he's been in prison for over a year now. In fact, I'm gonna give you good news. Today, he was released. Today? Yes, he was released, and I think, do you, do you know this? I did not know that, no. He was released today, at, at least he's in house arrest right now. So that's a, good, a huge uh, win for us, because he deserves to be with his family, with his son, and he deserves to really be at least with his wife. He's still under arrest, I wanna make clear that, because yeah. he will not be on the streets uh, helping their people, but at the same time, right now we know that he's safe, at least, because we know that the government and the regime tortures the people that are in jail. Leopoldo Lopez, Gongo Cochea, the 600 political prisoners that we have right now, they have been tortured every single day. And the fact that he's with his family is a win for us. Because when you find people in every corner of the country, when you see them fighting for liberty, nothing else, because when you ask them, why are you here in the protest? It's because I want liberty. It's because I see my father with no job. It's because I see my mother without food on the table. And when you see that, they tell you, I need to go to the streets and fight for liberty and the opportunities that the country should provide to everyone. And that's why I'm so passionate about these ideas. And that's why I've been fighting for this for years. And I'm 20, I'm 20 years old, right? But if we don't fight today, there is no tomorrow.